Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 28th, 2019 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. We got an interesting detect that Guy wrote up this weekend. These are requests to his honeypots that do include a somewhat unusual BS underscore real underscore IP header. Now, first of all, it's uh, somewhat unusual to have headers with underscores instead of dashes in them. And then secondly, this particular content was double base 64 encoded. Now, once decoded, it revealed two IP addresses. One of the IP addresses was the source of the traffic. The second one, well, not really clear what it does, but appears to be a scanner for web servers. So what's possibly happening here is that this is some kind of proxy chain that keeps adding IP addresses and probably each time sort of base64 encoding this particular header. Quick Google search showed that this header was seen the first time about a year ago, like last September was of the earliest entry that I found, but couldn't link it to a particular tool. If anybody knows, please share. And Rob wrote a diary talking about how to parse DNS logs in a Windows environment. So first of all, how to enable the logging on your Windows DNS server, and then how to use PowerShell to parse the logs. Interestingly, in the example that he found, he did run into some odd issues, odd DNS requests from a switch, and that switch may actually have been been infected, but that particular part of the investigation is still outstanding. But one of the lessons here, yes, it's great to do some DNS collection on the endpoint with Sysmon and the like, but devices like these switches, for example, are usually not covered by these efforts. So collecting DNS logs on your DNS server in addition is certainly quite valuable. And we don't see a lot of malicious software in Apple's iOS App Store, but when Dara was able to find some that does actually participate in click fraud. Now, the APIs someone can use for an iOS application are, of course, quite restrictive compared to, for example, Android, but you're still able to send HTTP requests and you're still able to receive responses. So the way this particular adverb works or ad clicker, where I should really say is that it does retrieve commands from a command control server. And then while the application is running, it will send HTTP requests to various websites simulating ad clicks. So this isn't adware in the sense that it will display advertisements to the user of the phone, to the user. This activity is mostly not visible. Wondera did link all of these applications to App Aspect Technologies. They notified Apple and Apple has now removed these applications from the App Store. The same developer also is publishing applications for Android. In the past, there have been some malicious applications published to the Android Google Play Store. However, currently there don't appear to be any malicious applications from this developer in the Play Store. And England conducted a review of how its law enforcement organizations are responding to cybercrime. Now, fairly lengthy report here, but one interesting tidbit hiding in this report was that about 9,000 reports of cybercrime were not processed because anti-malware held back these reports. This is something we have been struggling also with off and on that, well, everybody now these days, as they should, uses anti-malware on mail servers, on endpoints. And of course, if you are dealing professionally with malware, that sometimes gets in the way. And I think you certainly should make sure that your security groups and such have a way to actually receive malicious files from 
other users. Now, within security researchers, of course, we often utilize encrypted files in order to accomplish that without being intercepted by anti-malware. But that, of course, doesn't work sort of for the public, for your normal employees and such to report malicious files to the security group. The simplest way to accomplish this usually is to set up a special mailbox that's not subject to antivirus and anti-malware policies. So any email sent to this mailbox will not be scanned. On the other hand, of course, in particular for researchers, sometimes if the malware gets scanned, gets recognized, and removed, that's sort of a sign that it's probably not interesting malware in terms of spending a lot of time analyzing it. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.